Okay, let's take a look at the process of, of taking a render from ZBrush and trying to kind of process it into a final image because it's the kind of thing that always drives me crazy when I see other people do great stuff with it. So I keep trying to figure out what they do. And you, you'll, see, you'll see this with a bunch of different people. I saw, I'll see Grissetti do it and, and so forth where they kind of bring in a bunch of different renders from ZBrush and just composite them and kind of slowly build them up into something that feels a little bit more realistic. So I'm gonna kind of show you what I did. Again, not saying that this is the best way to do it, but this, this kind of worked in this case. So. I'm going to start with basically this layer, this render here in, in ZBrush. And this is the one that I bring in for the most part and start as, using my starting point. And I'm going to layer on a bunch of different other BPR renders from ZBrush from the exact same camera angle, obviously, but with different lighting effects and different materials and just try and kind of like pick and choose the parts of them to kind of get me to a final image and then just do a little paint over, obviously, in Photoshop. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go through all my layers, turn them all off, and then bring them back on one at a time and explain like you know what i use and again it's going to be different for everybody obviously depending on what your subject is and so forth obviously but let's take a look so here is the main guy you're going to see i'm going to come here and i have a bunch of different folders here post-production which is basically all kinds of little you know all the little stuff on top to make it feel more realistic we'll go through that effects as you can guess it's just kind of lighting and that kind of thing the saber light well that's saber light and now we're going to go to primary. I'm going to go to my background here, and you're going to see in my background mostly it's just a couple of little flamey, smoky things. I'm just going to turn that off. So the background is just a gradient with a couple of adjustments to kind of make it look the color and the darkness that I want. So let's look at where we kind of get, where we start with when it comes to actually working on the character himself. So my first um, folder is my primary folder, which is going to be basically all the different lighting elements of this guy. And um, I'm just going to turn off all this stuff. So again, I have a few, a bunch of different renders from ZBrush. And I'll explain which, you know, what I rendered with. Uh, it's kind of like just, you know, put us in a, in a mindset of where we're going here. But let's start with just my first folder, which is my lighting folder. And this is basically the same guy rendered with light coming from different directions. Okay, so you can see here I have my layer zero, which is the main guy here. Um, and I think I have it turned off. Yes. Okay. So and then I have L1, L2, L3, and L4. I have four different lighting setups in addition to the one where it's coming straight from the front. So let's kind of turn all this down. And here's what, again, this is the one that I started with. This is the one I came in with, right? This is just, just this guy, layer zero, which is basically a light hitting him straight in the face, right? So there is there are some shadows, obviously, but not a whole lot. But the idea of these other lighting layers, they're basically to kind of give us lighting from different directions and we can kind of layer them and essentially kind of like fake bounce light. So if I go here to open, I'm going to open up um, the 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 different rent the different layers that i just did so you can see what i'm talking about so let's go here to renders and i'm going to grab l1 through l4 and you're going to see they're just literally you know l1 is light coming from above l2 is light coming from below left and right right so they're just different they're just different angles of light and they're you know and what they will do is they'll kind of compensate maybe for some of those areas in the original render which were not being hit at all and it just kind of gives me access to lighting in that area so l2 again which was lighting from below in my case i started with this one again your your, your models may vary in terms of like what order works best but i brought it in you can see here i set it to overlay and a very very low opacity so it's barely there all it's doing really is it's getting a little bit more darkness on the top um, and hitting a little bit more of the brightness from below so again it's barely a thing it's just kind of like it's just toning down some of the uh some of the stuff that was being hit from the straight on shot. L3, uh, again, you can see this is the one coming from left and this is how it worked for me anyway. And I wanted this, I have it set to screen and you can see basically I just wanna have the left hand side be hit with a little bit more light. I wanted to have a little bit light hitting the, the side of the saber here. Um, and this is just, again, this is kind of giving me a little bit more bounce light from the side here. L1 is the light from above. Um, not a whole lot probably with L1 here. I have it set to lighter color. So I'm just getting a little bit of, of light hitting the top so I can get some of the more specularity, I think, on the armor. Um, but a lot of this is going to be kind of like toned down soon. L4, this is the one that's going to seem a little bit weird. I'm going to bring this in, and what this seems to do is give me a lot of light from the side. But what it also does is it kind of removes the shadow, which makes him feel a little bit more like he's got some depth to him. But the reason I brought this one in, again, L4, as you can see, it's the light from the right, is because I want him to have the lightsaber obviously on. There's going to be light hitting him from here. In my mind, there's going to be some flames in the background. So this L4, I brought it in, but I also have a hue and saturation or colorized layer attached to turn that red. So when I turn that on, you see it's it's only affecting that one layer. So all I'm really doing is giving myself some some red 
light hitting him here. So it's not really removing the shadow as it may have seemed. It's adding kind of a, you know, a reddish light. So this is my basic lighting here. It's just the, the L1 through L4, right? That's it. So I'm just bringing in those different ones, kind of, again, mixing and matching them. Nothing special yet, but it kind of just gives me a little bit of, of bounced light that I can kind of play with. Now, these next two layers are really all about the lightsaber. Um, there's a, a matte cap called Sky Metal. Um, so I rendered out the entire thing and I brought it in. I have it set to overlay at 100%, but you can see here, basically I just, it kind of gives me some metallicity um, on some of these parts, right? Like the armor parts. Uh, so they're not quite so rubbery looking, you know, it just kind of gives them a little bit more of a different sheen. So if I go here, this is my, <laughs> this is my exciting uh, alpha here. Uh, basically I'm just, you know, I'm just bringing in some metallicity here, right? But when I do that, it does kind of darken this a touch. So the chrome is really just more about giving it a little bit of a gleam on the metal areas here. Nothing much yet, but still, you know, we're getting closer. Okay, so that's all really these two metal renders. Again, I was just rendering them out in ZBrush using the sky metal matte cap and then one of the one of the chrome matte caps. Um, I can't I think I can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been just Z Metal actually, but it was just a you know it's just a metal one. So that was it for that, right? So that's where we are in terms of just blocking out the basic guy. But now here's where we're gonna, we're gonna start using rim lighting the spec lighting to kind of really give him, I think, a little bit more uh, of you know, some personality. So as you can see, just like with my, my regular lighting here, I'm gonna open this up. Um, I rendered out a bunch of different, uh, well, not a bunch, three different rim light passes in ZBrush. And again, just I put the light, you know, I move the light behind him. I have one light coming from, you know, kind of the left, one from above, and one from Okay, yeah, one's from above, I'm sorry. One's from the right, one's from the left. So again, just really hitting the outer edges here. And for the most part, you know, one of these I'm, I probably will actually use just like this to kind of separate it from the background. But the other ones I'm gonna attach hue and saturation or colorize adjustment layers to kind of make them look like they're, you know, he's being illuminated by fire or his lightsaber. So here we are in my in my next little folder, which is my rim lighting folder that we just talked about. And I'm gonna bring in rim one. Again, rim one is just the light from above. This one I'm pretty much just going to use as a rim light. I have it set to add 100%. I'm just kind of giving him a nice little uh, illumination from above. It really helps to kind of like make the lightsaber pop too. And that's really it for that. The other two, R2 and R3, which is basically the right side and the left side, I'm going to use that essentially as lighting, so like like color lighting. So I'm going to bring this in. I think I have it set to add again, so it's very, very bright. But then right above that, I have a dedicated uh, hue saturation colorized uh, layer set to orange and this is really more about the um, the gonna be the flames behind them right that's the idea for this one so I know there's gonna be like kind of like a flamey again the impression of flames anyway so basically this rim light is really just a way of giving me something to attach the bright colorization to and then it's going to be the exact same thing here with the other side now in this case here as you can see this is the light coming from the left and I have a hue saturation and I actually turn this blue it's a, or a kind of a greenish blue. You can see here my colorization is kind of like, you know, like a, like, a aqua, like, a, like a light blue color. I don't know why. I just wanted to have a little bit of like other kind of light coming from the other side. It's sci-fi, so you kind of assume there's something bluish somewhere. So I just wanted to kind of give us, I don't know, a little bit of contrast there color-wise. And that was my rim lighting. So again, not a whole lot. I haven't really done anything in terms of painting. I just brought in a bunch of different render layers and kind of selectively masked out what I wanted so far. Okay, now on top of all that, I'm going, to do, I'm going to do some spec, and there's not a whole lot going on here either. If I turn this on, again, we're just basically getting some scene illumination, right? Like in other words, like wherever, you know, whatever is supposed to be in the environment, it's just going to kind of be uh, bouncing off of him a little bit. And you can see when I open my spec, I have pretty much, it's almost like a repeat of rim lighting where I just bring in some spec and then do a hue sat on there. And you can see here I have two specular passes, one from this front, one from the side. Obviously the main, the main pass is the same kind of like of that main lighting where it's just hitting him straight in the front. And then I have one coming from the side to kind of be able to give me access to the the, the uh, right side here. And again, this is just black and basic material too, which is, you know, that shiny version of, the, of that material. So it's not crazy high spec. I didn't use anything crazy. I just wanted to get some very kind of like dull highlights on there. So again, same idea. I'm going to bring in my, I'm going to turn all these off for a second. And then here's my first one. Um, this is the one coming straight from the front, set to add 100%. But then I just, again, I did another colorized layer with kind of a, a reddish orange. So again, I'm just kind of adding a little bit of, of environment light hitting him in the front here. Still kind of boring in terms of the overall texture because there isn't any texture. We'll come back to that. Spec two is, again, coming from the right-hand side, you can see it just kind of gives me access to this little area here. And this is really more about the lightsaber. 
because obviously if he has his lightsaber on, this right side is gonna be getting some of that red light. So I bring in my spec, then I did a hue saturation with the colorization set mostly to red. Um, so it was kind of getting me closer to, you know, reflecting that lightsaber, which we haven't done yet, but you know, we're planning ahead here. Okay, and that is literally it for spec. Spec is just kind of giving me some reflected light here. This next one, kind of a throwaway. Uh, it's subsurface scattering. Um, he's not, you know, he's not human from our sense of the words. So this kind of like reddish, this is a, a skin matte cap that comes with ZBrush. Um, I usually, I set it to soft light. And you can see here at a very low opacity, it just kind of gives his face. And I, can, I only, I only uh, brought in the mask as you can see on the face here. Um, I brought it in there and it kind of gives him a little bit of a warmth here, but actually I wanted to make him feel more alien. So I did a hue set adjustment and I made it somewhat bluish because again, I just, in my mind, he's got this pale face. I wanted him, I want him to have a little more of a bluish green to his face. I don't know why. I just thought that was kind of cool. This next one is the big one for me. I love this one. This is the cavity layer and you can see how it just, it just, it just kind of like, I don't think it makes it look more realistic. It just makes it feel more like the kind of a greenish gray that kind of just makes it feel more I don't know it's, I just like the way it looks I wish I had, had a word for it this is one of those uh, I think it's called Loden one of those materials in in uh, the ZBrush has probably on ZBrush Central it's just, I just cranked up and you can probably use any matte cat for this I just went in and cranked up the cavity detection so that if I were to kind of um, bring this to normal and crank it all the way up it just has again this kind of like a lot of a lot of cavity detection here. I kind of like this this kind of beigeish greenish color. Um, I just like the way it looks when, it, when I set it to soft light. So that's the one I used. Uh, I just I really just I love the way that this to me is like one of my favorite layers. It just it does a lot of work. Okay, so all that with all primary. Okay, it's all just kind of getting him roughed in in terms of the overall layers. But as you can see again, I still haven't painted anything. I just brought in a bunch of different layers. Now saber light. Again, not overly exciting, but it's just going to give me the saber light. And again, the saber light does. I have a couple things here. One, I have the saber light itself, and two, I have a little bit of reflected light here on on my guy. Um, saber light, of course, is just you know just white paint over the uh, over the saber, and then an outer glow. That's really all it is. I just kind of painted. I just used my lasso through white paint in there, and then did a red outer glow, and that's pretty much it. See, white and then red. <laughs> that's it. But these layers here, um, they're all just reflected light on the underside of him. And all that is, it's basically, it's just my one of my rim lights where the light was coming from above. I just colorized the whole thing red and then just duplicated it three times for and had it to add. So it just kind of kept like building on itself, you know, to get brighter and brighter. That's really all it was. It was just, I just it was just, again, it was just a quick little cheap way of, of getting some reflected red light there. This is just a little red paint and a little orange paint on the uh, on the little chest piece. That was it. Now effects again. Effects are going to do a little bit more toward just ultimately just tweaking things that I wanted to you know to to, to make a little bit more interesting. And this is mostly going to be um, just a couple little tidbits here and there. And these are the kinds of things that are fun to do at the end. So again, just a little smoke here with a, with a cloud brush. Um, just a little extra glow um, around here. Just you know again using the mask and having set the color dodge. Just kind of painting in some some colors just to kind of get a little bit of glow in there. I don't really love uh, that, so go away. Um, but yeah, that's really all that was. Um, let's come in here and get that out. All right, so now I'm gonna come in here and this one's, I just add a little more glow to the saber and this is a big deal. This this one, this, this the, the noise is a big deal because one of the things that you'll see with the, with the armor in general is it's way too smooth. So noise again, you know, obviously you know it noises. You make a make a new layer and go to you know, filter and just, uh, render and noise, and then I just set it to soft light and knock it down. You can see it just kind of gives me a lot of little grain, but especially on the armor, it's going to make it work look a lot better in a little bit. Before that, it just feels very rubbery. So there's that. Um, always good to have noise in in the long run. Now this little one here, if I zoom out. This is just leg shadow here, so I'm just going to call this leg shadow. Uh, again, these are just odds and ends. But then I did, I did a color look up, and usually, you know, that, that's kind of like a filter, but I just did that just to kind of add a little bit of darkness, a little contrast to it. I didn't really go too crazy with it. You can see I actually turned it way down, but that was just, again, the effects is really just looking around at things you want to fix and, and doing that. I'll go back to my background now and bring in, I just, again, I just painted in some smoke. Uh, add a little bit of color to it, add a little bit of a gradient, and then did some more smoke. So again, just to kind of fill out that background there. 
Post production is where kind of like the, the, the all the little fancy stuff comes in, right? So you can see here it kind of gives me you look at the face, the face changes quite a bit with the eyes and the shadows. The armor gets a lot more stuff happening to it. And this is really there's not a lot of, of amazing stuff happening here. It's a lot of the same thing over and over again. Um, more often than not, it's like for the metal and stuff. Uh, I just kind of brought in uh, a metal texture and just kind of painted it in where I wanted it. So again, I'll show you an example. So let's say, for example, and this is going to be something that, that I'm going to need to do quite a bit um, to make this look cool because this metal, this this armor is very very dull. I'm going to bring in like a, a metal texture like this one here. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. And I did this again. I did this over and over and over again. I'm just going to like put it roughly in place here and just just bring in um i'm going to set it to linear dodge so it's very very bright and then hold down alt and make a mask so it's completely black and then i'll come in here and just you know like paint in basically where i want to have a little bit of wear and tear show so here i just have a brush with a little bit of a, of a random size uh jitter and again you know i i made a, a negative mask so you can't see it at all and now i'm just going to come in and with you know with my brush just kind of uh let's maybe not make my size jitter quite so crazy um, I come in here and just kind of paint some of that in, right? And this, that's basically all I did. I just kind of came in and just and just brought some of that in. And then I would just, you know, go to black and just kind of like knock some of it back and just, you know, just went through and just did that everywhere. Um, you know, a couple little scratches here and there and that kind of thing and just, you know, knocked it back a little bit. And I just went over and over with that everywhere, you know, and then I put some shadows in there. But that, that's kind of like what I did everywhere to make the, um, to make the metal texture seem a little bit more interesting you can see i just kind of did a little bit all over the place right and yeah i mean i think that's it i think everything else is just a little bit of painting here and there to kind of make the eyes look a little bit more interesting but for the most part um that was the big thing was going through with that little metal wear and tear and just kind of giving the you know giving like all the stuff like this you know a little bit more of a feel like there's something actually realistic there um, but yeah, so we you know, started with the basic render here and just layering things on, but there's so little of actual painting. I think the only thing that I actually like, painted like freehand um, was just adding some, some little red uh, reflected lights to the, to the hand here. I think that's pretty much it. Everything else was, was literally just bringing in a bunch of different renders and uh, selectively masking or unmasking them to get that final result.